Now, Turihua can be found just off State Highway 85, about halfway between the townships of Alexandra and Dunedin, in the southern region of the South Island of New Zealand. This general area is known as the Maniatoto. Aturihua was originally known as Rough Ridge until 1907, the area being first settled by pastoral run holders in 1858. Gold was discovered in 1863. The Golden Progress Mine is still in evidence today as a reminder of this era. Aturihua is today a modest farming community which boasts New Zealand's coldest weather in winter down to minus 21 and the hottest in summer up to around 40 degrees. A very tough climate to live in before the advent of electricity and insulated homes. The Aturihua community hosts the annual Brass Monkey Motorbike Rally, which is held at Queen's Birthday Weekend, as well as curling tournaments and ice skating on natural ice on the nearby Idaburn Dam. It is also a stop for cyclists travelling the very popular Central Otago Rail Trail, where they inevitably discover the fully operational historic Gilchrist grocery store dating from 1899, much of it still being in the original condition and the well-preserved, unique rural Hayes Engineering Works, which is now owned by the New Zealand Historic Places Trust. Ernest Hayes was born in Warwickshire, England in 1851, where he was apprenticed as a millwright and engineer. Ernest and his wife Hannah, with their first baby, emigrated to this area of New Zealand in 1882. Hayes Engineering Works developed out of a need to invent and fabricate agricultural products that were otherwise not readily available, but were necessary for farm work. Serious engineering production began in 1902 with simple, efficient farm implements such as the Hayes wire strainer, a cart jack and a wire coiler. Hayes Engineering Works became internationally famous for the invention and production of the parallel wire strainer used for straining wire fences. Other famous inventions included the pollard cutter for cutting pollard for poisoning rabbits, the triplex wire strainer, which is still in regular farm use, and cattle stops. In 1910, a windmill was constructed to power the works. That windmill was 12 metres high, with sails measuring 6.7 metres. It was eventually replaced with a pelton wheel, powered by the force of the piped water, as wind in the area proved unreliable. This led to the production of windmills for pumping water on farms. At its peak, Hayes employed eight people. Today, we power the works with a diesel tractor to demonstrate the inner workings of the works. It drives a complicated set of shafts, pulleys and belts. Note the very simple oiling system for the bearings. The belts run a series of machines that Hayes used to manufacture parts for the implements they produced. The machinery includes several drills, a heavy duty grinder and an ice skate sharpener. A punch and shear machine which was used laterally mostly for making fence standards, a hacksaw with an automatic shut-off mechanism, and a four-speed lathe. The sandstone grinding wheel was used for sharpening chisels, but also it was very effective for sharpening shears. Also featured at the works is an early unique model drop saw. Its timber is coated in coal tar as a preservative. A tumble metal cleaner used to clean away any rust residue on the metal. A treadle wood lathe which helped to shape the many wooden patterns of parts that were masterfully made here to be sent off to the foundry in Dunedin where they formed the sand moulds for pouring the cast iron into, and of course the forge and all its associated tools. 
a display showing the many labour-saving devices produced by the works, together with more information on the background of this remarkable man and his family, are also housed here. A walk through the newly restored homestead allows a further glimpse into how the Hayes family lived in the later years. The building consists of double mud brick walls, interior and exterior. The interior walls were lined with a gypsum plaster, which is mostly left in its natural state, though some of the bedrooms have been painted or wallpapered. Being a clever inventor, Ernest Hayes incorporated some unique features into his new home. The most original concept of all were the set of levers in the laundry. These were directly connected to the Pelton wheel deflection flap, enabling the house occupants to deflect the water away from the Pelton wheel and thus turn off the electricity at night and conversely turn it back on in the morning. Hayes Engineering Works is a well-preserved example of a late 19th century rural engineering works. In fact, the only one of its kind in original condition in New Zealand or Australia. This site is now open for display on a year-round basis and is largely due to the dedication of Helen and Ken Gillespie, who now manage the works for the New Zealand Historic Places Trust.